Spider-Man, Ghostbusters, The Karate Kid, just to name a few of some of the major motion pictures and IPs that have come from Sony Pictures and their acquired property over the years from other studios like Columbia and TriStar. But none of those can ever seem to hold a candle to the entertainment value provided by their chairman and CEO, Tom Rothman, who took the stage on the first day of the 2023 CinemaCon. If you thought his remarks a few years ago were cute when he made his closing comments with, Netflix my ass. Well, this year, Tom Rothman decided to step it up because according to him, quote, Sony isn't f***ing around. Well, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video, not yet subscribed to this channel, please do take a moment, turn that little red subscribe button to gray, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. Let's talk about some Tom Rothman comments, CEO and chairman of Sony Pictures Group. Uh, th he is the gift that keeps on giving. The theatrical exhibitioners love this guy. He is one of the few CEOs of a major Hollywood studio that was fully dedicated, of course, to theaters throughout the pandemic. And he is rubbing his hands together in glee as he does his ha ha, I told you so, I was right dance all over the stage at CinemaCon. Let's go to the Hollywood Reporter for some of his remarks. Now, Rothman has always had a reputation of being no holds barred with how he addresses topics, even in major events like CinemaCon. We've talked about Tom Rothman before, especially with the Marvel Cinematic Universe entry of Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, of course, Marvel Studios made the picture, but it was still a Sony distributed picture. And as we have also discussed, Tom Rothman had a heavy hand on what that film was going to look like at the end of the day, even though it was turned over to Marvel itself to be produced. Talk more about that in just a minute. From The Hollywood Reporter, Sony's Tom Rothman strikes again at CinemaCon. Quote, streamers don't create movie stars, only global hit movies do. And for those of you who may not be aware, CinemaCon is a major event put on by the National Association of Theater Owners, you can find them at natoonline.org. And quite frankly, you have heard us quote NATO statistics here on Valiant Renegade a great many times when we talk about theatrical exhibition. Leave it to Tom Rothman to get a crowd going. It's become tradition for the Sony Pictures Motion Picture Group Chairman CEO to kick off CinemaCon with a colorful remark. This year was no different as Tom took the stage in Las Vegas Monday night and addressed the state of theatrical, which continues to find its footing following the COVID-19 crisis. Quote, For the past three years, as the punditocracy pissed on your business, we at Sony held fast. We were the only major studio devoted entirely to theatrical, said Rothman, sparking applause. Quote, We were sure in the conviction that movies in movie theaters couldn't just survive, but triumph. But after that relatively mundane opening sentence, Tom Rothman let the Tom Rothman out. Quote, The other thing that pundits say is that movie stars don't matter anymore. I really hope all of my competitors believe that shit. True movie stars matter more than ever. They're just more rare than ever. Streamers don't create movie stars. Only global hit movies do. <laughs> we need more of that candor. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, Rothman had a former famous quip back from 2018 when after showing footage from Blade Runner 2049, he left the stage looking at the audience and saying, quote, Netflix my ass. See, guys like Tom Rothman are old school, blood and guts, movie theater guys. They're real studio heads that still firmly believe in the power of theatrical exhibition and the irreplaceable revenue stream and financial success with regards to return on investment that theaters only can provide, especially when trying to launch a major IP or any type of blockbuster event. 
There's simply no replacing a major theatrical release. Now, what's funny is following the expiration of the pay one window with stars back at the end of 2021, Sony signed a deal with Netflix. Netflix was all too happy to take it and pay Sony billions of dollars over the course of several years, beginning with any theatrical release that Sony had as of January 1st, 2022. By the way, that's why Spider-Man No Way Home got the stars as opposed to Netflix, because it was under the old deal that Sony had, not the new one. And as a reminder, how good is Sony at theatrical windowing? Well, Look at Spider-Man No Way Home yet again. It was almost seven months after that movie came out in theaters by the time it made it two stars for streaming. Up until that point, it spent a solid three to four months in theaters and then had another solid two to three months at least when it came to PVOD or premium video on demand sales and rentals as well as physical media sales. Sony still knows how to make a ton of money on movies even if they don't break even at the box office. Just take things like The Woman King, for example. Sure, Sony lost basically their entire marketing budget on that film, but no worries, because Netflix effectively stroked a check for it after the fact. And with regards to Tom Rothman's Big I Told You So, from the article at The Hollywood Reporter, further, theater owners and legacy studios have seen the perceived threat from streaming come full circle as Rothman famously proclaimed Netflix my ass. For the first time, both Amazon and Apple are embracing a traditional theatrical model for some of their original films. Moreover, Apple Original Films has actually selected Sony as its distribution partner on Ridley Scott's epic drama, Napoleon, starring Joaquin Phoenix. And like we've mentioned before, even the most dedicated streaming-only services, meaning the guys and girls out there that don't actually come from a movie studio background, people like Amazon, people like Apple, and even people like Netflix are starting to turn a corner, realizing that they have to put these big projects, these 100, 150, $200 million massive production budget films can't just get dumped onto a streaming service because all the available evidence for the past several years seems very clear. While big hit television series that are unique to a streamer or original content in that regard do attract and maintain good subscribership, in other words, avoiding churn, movies do not. Movies don't bring in a ton of new subs, and if they do, the churn rate on those who sign up for a streaming service to watch a particular streaming-only film tend to bail out immediately after. Simply put, in the long range, big blockbuster, big budget films made for streaming services are not a long-term financial viability. At least not without putting them in theaters first for maybe at least a 30 to 45 day theatrical window to where they can hopefully recover their costs and create a buzz for more people to want to go watch it on that streaming service. But Rothman wasn't done. Speaking of the Sony release of Napoleon from Apple Films, he said, quote, The film will be released worldwide at Thanksgiving with a robust theatrical window and a full throttle marketing campaign. We trust that you, the theater owners, will give all of this your full support as the import of all this is clear. Rothman is hardly alone when arguing that the awareness and buzz a theatrical release can generate is unparalleled versus sending a title straight to streaming. He's also been a proponent of building a varied slate, even if it means taking risks on such films as last year's Where the Crawdads Sing or The Woman King, in addition to superhero blockbusters or other traditional fare. Quote, As you can see at Sony, we aren't f***ing around. Originality is always a risk. But to me, the bigger risk is boring the audience to death with sameness. No balls, no glory. Frankly, Hollywood needs a lot more guys like Tom Rothman out there. They need people like this that are dedicated to the traditional craft because that traditional craft is unique in the sense that it cannot be replaced with direct-to-streaming anything. The theatrical model is the one that works the best, and it is the one that has been proven to be unequivocally the highest potential return on investment from a financial standpoint, bar none. 
But still, a lot of those other streamers are doing it all wrong. Take a look at Netflix, who even after just doing All Quiet on the Western Front for a few days in limited release to get Oscar nominations capability, they should have let the movie out nationwide in a good, solid theatrical exhibition window. They didn't. It was only out for a few days by itself before it hit Netflix and only in a very small number of locations. And this summer, they have a blockbuster movie coming out on their own streaming service, Extraction 2, starring Chris Hemsworth, the first movie of which was lauded with praise. It was one of the most amazing action pictures I've ever seen. Netflix spent a reported $70 million filming that, and I can promise you this new one is probably a good bit more, probably around $100 million, if not higher. Why not put a movie like that in theaters for 30 to 45 days on a wide release in at least 3,000 screens before you drop it on your own streaming service? Recover some of those costs. Make a big buzz to get people to come to Netflix. Putting it on your own streaming service right off the bat does no good. How about Disney? They're still fumbling with streaming releases. Disney has been talking about what a great reboot of Peter Pan this will be coming to Disney+. Plus on Friday, April 28th, just a few days from now. Maybe Disney is too afraid to put a movie like that into theaters after so many box office wipeouts that they've had with their general entertainment, things like Lightyear, things like Strange World. Maybe they don't want to have another embarrassment with Peter Pan. That's my guess. But they're dumping it straight to Disney+, Plus, and I assure you that's another production right there that is at least $100 million dollars if not maybe pushing as high as 150 that is a big budget piece. What is the deal with these studios? Universal seems to have found the most happy balance between the two, meaning that even though they have their own proprietary streaming service like Peacock, they still struck deals with Amazon and Netflix for animated and live action properties respectively. They go to Peacock for the first four months of the pay one window and then spend the next 10 months over on Amazon or Netflix, depending on what type of film they are, before coming back to Peacock for the last four months of that window. And for that deal, Universal is getting billions of dollars from Amazon and Netflix. Meanwhile, Disney continues to consume all of their own content, and that's why Disney Plus, as we've stated many times, is cumulatively $12 billion in the hole. It's going to be a long, long time for them to climb out. And even on occasion when Universal puts things direct to Peacock in tandem with theaters, they tend to be smaller budgeted pictures. Think of the recent Halloween film entries. Meanwhile, Sony Studios just keeps clipping it along, and Tom Rothman is taking no prisoners. He is laughing at his competitors, and quite frankly, from what he said, he hopes they continue to think and act as stupidly as they have in the last few years. And I'm sure Jason Kalar is still looking for his unemployment check after Project Popcorn and his mess at Warner Brothers in 2021. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Do you still believe in the future of theatrical exhibition? I know I do, but if you don't, I want to hear why you don't and why you think streaming is the superior medium and how companies can potentially recover their costs for some of these massively budgeted pictures by going directly that route. I think even Netflix is going to be putting more things over the next few years into theaters not just for Oscar nominations, but also for cost recovery and making bigger noises. Apple is still very young, and they're getting started, but they've already recognized that they cannot continue to put everything onto Apple TV+. Plus. They don't have the subscribers to support the cost they're outlaying, and it's not bringing in the subs they're looking for. But if they start putting some of these major releases in theaters first, like they're doing with Napoleon later this year, in tandem with Sony... They might just start creating some noise. I hope they do. We'll see how this works out. Until next time, take care. <laughs>